Can't you just feel it? The conflict is becoming apparent in our culture. It reminds me of those words of John Paul II. We're now living in the final confrontation between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between the church and the anti-church, between Christ and the antichrist. And if we don't choose to know God's word, to believe God's word, to follow God's word, we're going to be a sitting duck for all kinds of confusion, all kinds of disorder. Those are really important choices that people have to make. And these choices are difficult. Who am I going to marry? What kind of life am I going to live? How am I going to raise my kids? What am I going to do with my time, my talent, and my treasure? And I have to make a choice today. Jesus says to each one of us, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. The question is, do we want it? Hey, welcome to the choices we face. Peter Herbeck is with me today as he often is. And we have this wonderful video we're gonna show you. Last year, first time since COVID, we were able to have our live annual Renewal Ministries gathering at the Marriott Hotel in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is our neighboring town. We had lower attendance because people are still a little, little shy about coming out, but it was great to be back together in person at our gathering. And it was also great to hear Peter's inspired exhortation at the beginning of his talk. Yeah, it was, it was good to be back together and see friends we hadn't seen in yeah. person for a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's such a blessing. It, you know, you start to really appreciate what you had when you don't get to see people. And I think right. everybody was right. so delighted to be in the same place, to gather around the Lord together yeah. and just celebrate and enjoy each other. It was yeah. quite a gift. And I think we, we really encountered the Lord in a beautiful and powerful yeah. way on the weekend. Yeah. It was excellent. I think so, too. Yeah. Let's, let's watch the video. Let him who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. It's critically important. The church, which is a, a miracle, a living organism in the earth, created on the day of Pentecost, brought to birth into existence by the power of the Holy Spirit that was united to Jesus Christ in his flesh. Jesus came, became one of us. He became a human being so that heaven and earth can be joined in a human being, in him. And Jesus was the anointed one filled with the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. And he, this is why, this is why Jesus is the only savior of the world. There's a lot of good prophets and teachers in history, but only Jesus is the savior of the world. Because what humanity needs is not just more gnosis, more knowledge, the acquisition of more knowledge or information or power or whatever. What we need is new life, and not just a feeling. We need a life that no one on earth can access on their own power. We all have biological life. Our biological life, which is given to us, it's, we have a, it's a ticking clock, right? And we all know we're going to die. And the gospel is very clear that the death problem begins with the sin problem. And the sin problem is separation from God. God who alone is the ground of all being and life itself. You're right? In him we move and live and move and have our being. And what God did in Jesus to come and save us was not just to come and give us a message or add a few chapters onto a Bible and to say, make sure you're following all the rules just right so you can get here. No, he came, became one of us so heaven and earth could be united in a person. And Jesus is Messiah. He's Jesus Christ, Lord. He's Savior. That's what Jesus means, right? He's the Savior. He's Christ. He's the anointed. What's he anointed with? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not some vague force that everybody tunes into. The Holy Spirit is part of the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is actually a person, right? And Jesus is anointed with the Spirit, and he's Lord. That means he has all power and authority over heaven and earth. So he goes through what we just celebrated. He took on human flesh. He revealed the love of the Father. He manifested the kingdom of God. He preached the gospel to us, and then he went to a cross and died. And he bled and died. So he could destroy the powers that are holding human beings in bondage to darkness and slavery to sin. The power, the, the Bible's so beautifully clear on this that the one thing Jesus never should have done, you know, the devil never should have done is spilled the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus 
is what broke the back of Satan's kingdom and dominion. There's no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. And the pure sacrifice of Jesus Christ, one drop of that blood could save the whole world. And the devil, the devil did what he should not have done. And friends, then Jesus not only deals, he disarmed the principalities and powers through the cross, dying for us. And how he died for us is a message for us forever. Because from the cross, and it says right in John chapter 14, at the end of John 14, Jesus is there in the upper room talking to his disciples, and he says, I won't be with you much longer. And they're like, what do you mean? What do you mean? He goes, because the devil's coming after me, he said. But the devil has no hold on me, he said. So what's going to happen, I'm going to put it in colloquial terms. Jesus said, what's going to happen in the next 24 hours, in the next few days, he said to him. He said, the devil has no hold on me, but I do I do whatever the Father commands me to do. He said, I want the whole world to know, and I'm going to demonstrate it over the next 48 hours that my Father's good, my Father's trustworthy, and the greatest and most important thing a human being can ever do is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the love language of heaven is obeying the commands of God. That means trust. It doesn't mean just being under rules. It means surrendering to God's light, God's command, and following him. So Jesus fulfilled the first commandment on the cross. He loved God with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, and all of his strength. And he told his best friends, I'm going to do this because I want the whole world to know that I love the Father. This is the meaning of human life. This is the essence of it. And Jesus is coming to show us because we're lost and wayward and afraid and under the dominion of darkness and figuring out who we are and all the rest. And Jesus came and said, this is who you are. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And my father's so trustworthy, even when he's dying on the cross. We have a bad day. I mean, I get a bad day and say, does God even exist? <laughs> you know, does God care about me? And it's like, Jesus goes to the cross and expresses to us the, what Jesus called the first and the greatest thing that a human being can ever do. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that's on his terms. Not like, um, no, he revealed love on the cross. He defined love on the cross. He's the truth about love on that cross. Everybody talks love constantly, everywhere. Jesus is the truth about what love is, and he revealed it to us. It's surrendering your life in trust to your creator, right? And then it says, because of that act of love by which we were saved, God has highly exalted Jesus and given Jesus the name that's above every name. And human history's destiny is this. Every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess to the glory of God the Father that, yes, indeed, your beloved Son, right? The glory of God the Father is on Jesus Christ. We will declare it. Even the demons are going to declare it. Everyone, because it's all about him. It's all about what he did. It's the father's love for the son. It's the son's love for the father. It's the love that created all things from which all things came into being. It's the only thing that could save the world. It's the relationships that will transform us forever. And they're giving us, Jesus is giving us the one thing nobody else can give us, eternal life. So when Nicodemus said to Jesus, Jesus is talking about him, Jesus said he has to be born again. What does that mean? How can man go into another, go back into the womb and all that, right? This poor rabbi, he's trying to figure it all out, you know? Nicodemus was a pretty good guy, don't you think, for the most part, it seemed like? But Jesus said, unless you be born again by water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus came to bring us a new birth, a new humanity, a new creation. 
God's answer to the human dilemma, the future of the human race is in the man who died and rose again and conquered death, swallowed it up in victory, and he's beginning the new humanity. And he wants to give his life to whoever's ready to receive it. And he said, the Father has given me the power to communicate the indestructible life that I now have to anyone who bears the image of my Father. If they repent, if they come and turn and come with me to my Father's house, and that means humbling ourselves and say, no, 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 I, I, I like that, but let me define how I'm supposed to go. Let me be the definer of everything. Let, let me, you know, you affirm me in what I'm deciding I'm going to be. Jesus said, no, no, no. That's a fool's errand. That's a fool's errand. It's made up. It's make-believe. And it'll leave you empty but I am the ground of all reality. I am the way, and I want to give it to you. But you can't grab it. You can't do it on your terms. You do it on my terms. I showed you, and I'm not just telling you what to do. I showed you with everything I had. I gave everything, and I'm telling you, fully expressing everything. I'm not just standing and wagging my finger and saying, get this done, improve yourself, make this happen. He said, no, do you see what I did? You come and do that with me. You follow with me, and I guarantee you what I've come into in glory, the glory at the right hand of my Father, a glory that we're going to share with you and a life that will never die, it will never go away. We're going to give this to you, and you become part of our family. I mean, how many human beings on the earth today are without family, are lost, right? And they're looking for love everywhere. They're looking to solve the problems they have. They're real problems. And the only destiny, the destiny they're longing for in their heart is the narrow way, which is Jesus. And because of sins of the church, because of weaknesses in human nature, because of brokenness and disappointment, because of hypocrisies, because of the deception of the devil, because of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and the things that we're up against, the power of sin and death, it can be hard for people to look at the church and say, there's an answer there? You know what I mean? There's a lot of broken, weak, weird people there. Exactly. Jesus loves people like that. You know? You know, some people don't come to church because it just isn't cool. It's not hip. It's not, it's not cool, you know? There's all kinds of ways the enemy tries to keep people away from the central message, which is a person, Jesus. Does that make sense, you guys? Well, Peter, at the end of that inspired exhortation, you asked the question, does that make sense? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it makes a great deal of sense. It's, yeah. it's like the best sense. It's, yeah. it's the true sense. Yeah, it's the, it's the basic gospel message, isn't it? It really was, but yeah. presented in a very convincing, penetrating way. And uh, it, it all comes down to who do you say he is? You know, if Jesus really is the Lord, guess what? Get in line, fall in line, become a disciple, uh, yeah. let go of all your preconceptions, let go of all the foolish stuff you picked up from the world, let go of your own foolish desires for your own life and find out who you are in Jesus and be willing to die to what you've known in order to be born to what you never could imagine would be a destiny for you. You know, unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground, it remains just a grain of wheat. If it falls into the ground, it bears much fruit. If we hold on to our life, it's not going to go anywhere, really, no matter what toys we have, no matter what worldly success we have, no matter how much we're striving for whatever, it's not going to amount to a hill of beans in the end. But if we let go of our life and lose what we thought was the most important thing for us, we're going to discover what you talked about, eternal life. And we're going to discover reality and we're going to discover the truth. We're going to discover clarity. We're going to have clarity of mind and peace of heart. We're going to have confidence. We're going to have joy. Hey, what a deal. That's good. That's good preaching, Ralph. Good <laughs> yeah. yeah. As, as you were t- talking, I was just thinking how much our culture is dominated by the question, preoccupied by the question, identity, identity, identity. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? You know? Yeah. And pretty much, I, I think the majority of people are in a position of saying, what, often people say, what is going on? I mean, it just like feels like the wheels of sanity are falling off in some way in that 
adults are are just. I was thinking about the, the young man in Ireland, you know, a while back, who uh, I think he was a school teacher, and uh, he they put him in jail because he refused to call a boy who says he's a girl a girl. Yeah. And and I and he what he said was. Um, I'll, I'll go to jail a thousand times or a hundred times before I ever tell a little boy that he's a girl. Yeah. You know? I thought, where did that light of sanity come from this in, in this world where everybody is just, you know, like a herd of, of buffaloes just rushing to say whatever they're supposed to say, no matter how crazy it gets. And then almost everyone has a moment. It's like, what is going on? Because you can't, the fundamental thing is you cannot deny God. Like Pope Benedict says about, What's happened in the Western world in particular, man is pushing God away from the human horizon. Mm -hmm. And God is light. What is light? Truth, understanding, wisdom that comes from the source of all truth and being. He said, when you push that away, what happens? He said, the darkness, which Jesus conquered, yeah. starts setting in because we invite it back again in our willfulness yeah. and we get stupid. Yeah. We lose wisdom. We're full of folly and it's like yeah. babble out there and yes. nobody seems to know what to do about it because man, what, what do we do about this? Well, how about you go to the source of human identity? How about we get humble and turn back to God? Yeah. That's the only way out of this. There right. is no other way out of this. It's going to get crazier and crazier because yeah. yeah. it's humanity running into darkness rather than light. Yeah, like you say, a herd of buffalo running over the cliff yeah. or lemmings running to the sea. Yeah. It's almost like a spell has come over people and a spell has come over people. A diabolical curse, a diabolical deception has been welcomed by the human race in the rebellion. And now they're literally under a spell. A spell that's leading them to destruction, a spiritual force, a spiritual power that has to be defeated by the word of God, the sword of the spirit, exactly. which is the word of God. Yeah. Uh, the, the feet that are shod with the gospel, uh, the, the, the shield of faith that extinguishes the flaming darts of the enemy. We need to put on the whole armor of God and we need to fight the battle. And the only way this darkness, the spell, this curse can be defeated is by the power of the word of God, the light of Christ. Yeah, it's really true. And I think, I mean, you see studies come out periodically. One of, a few years ago, League and Air studies state of theology and they had true false statements that people could respond to. And they had a large number of Catholics a part of that study and one study said, you know, or one, one true false statement said, you know, Jesus is a great moral teacher, but he's not God. Yeah. So 57% of self-identified Catholics said that that was a true statement. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then uh, another one was the Holy Spirit is like a force, sort of like Star Wars, is a force, but not a person, not a yeah. personal being at yeah. all. And 83%, 72% of Catholics said that's true, probably because they like Star Wars and got something from there. But, and then... Uh, 11% uh, said, I don't know how to answer that question. So it's like 83% of Catholics are confused yeah. about who the Holy Spirit is, even though in the creed we say every Sunday, yeah. you know, he's God from God, life from life, true God from true God, Jesus. And then the Holy yeah. Spirit is both a person, right? Yeah. And he's Lord and we honor him as Lord. Yeah. And and it's incredible. Christianity is a new life in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it, I can understand it can be a little a little hard to understand at first who the Holy Spirit is, but as you give yourself to it, as you read the Word of God, as you're baptized and you start living the faith, you start developing a living relationship with the Holy Spirit who's been given to us to lead us, to guide us, to help us follow Jesus' leadership. But a lot of folks don't even know it's, it's this vague thing out there. And plus, Jesus is a good guy. I agree, he's a good guy, yeah. but he's not God. I mean, so you cannot battle. You can't. You, you're, you can't be light in the darkness. Uh, you don't have any light to shine in the darkness if that's what you actually think as a right. Catholic. Right. I mean, you just don't, it's, you're not living Christianity. You're not born again. You're not alive in Christ. Yeah. Your baptism is not being lived. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's really true. Yeah. People need to put on Jesus Christ. People need yeah. to be clothed with Jesus Christ. Yeah. People need to have that personal relationship with him that you were talking about. People need to make an unconditional surrender to him and have a personal relationship with him. Otherwise, they don't have the power. They don't have the light. They don't have the joy. They don't have the freedom. They don't have the confidence. They don't have the identity. Yeah. You know, they'll be swept away by the darkness and confusion of the culture. You know, it's in the Old Testament, sometimes it says God put a curse on people. Yeah. There's a curse on us, yeah. the curse that comes from our own foolish decisions, the curse that comes from exchanging the truth of God for a lie, the curse that comes from worshiping the creature rather than the creator. You're familiar with that text, Peter. Yeah, right. Chapter one. Yeah. We're under a curse of our own making. We're under a darkness that we brought upon ourselves. And the Lord says, if that's the perverse choice you want to make, go ahead with it. See where it gets you. 
And it's getting us to a situation of utter foolishness, inconsistent, contradiction, where two plus two doesn't equals four anymore. And we're just kind of like milling around, making it up as we go along, thinking that whatever we think is the objective truth, anybody who opposes it is an enemy. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're kind of lost in the darkness. Is lost what, in the is darkness. what's going on, yeah. I was thinking of uh, the saints are so clear about all of this, right? I think of St. Francis in that famous letter he wrote to politicians <laughs> that I like so much, you know? Yeah, let's dust that off again yeah, and yeah, send it out yeah, again. Yeah. 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 I actually did it on YouTube a while back at the last uh, last yeah. election. Yeah. And the uh, but, but his point, he says he's very loving and humble, you know, St. Francis. And he goes, I'm writing you a letter to all the politicians of the world, you know? And he said, just to remind you, you know, Whatever you're doing, no matter what your responsibilities are, are that are before you, never forget the commandments of God. Because if you fail um, to stand and live the commandments of God, no matter how high your position, no matter how much your responsibility, you will come under a curse. There is, oh. That's what reminded me mm -hmm. of it. This is so you're in good standing with, uh, yeah. you know, with uh, Saint Francis Ralph because. I mean, and he's absolutely right about that. And the curse is you're walking in the darkness. You're, you're breaking from it. And there's a, there's a dominion in the power in the world. I mean, John, the beloved apostle said, you know, the whole world is in the power of the devil. This is a, this, it's real. It's the fallen dimension of, of human life. And he's a real power and he's smart and he wields his power. And if you think you can just walk through the world without the armor of God, without the light of God's word, and you're going to make your way, you're absolutely confused. Because mm -hmm. there are beings that are set against you that are so much smarter than you and so much stronger than you. If you're not bearing the armor of God and have the strength of the living God in you, you're going to lose that battle. Right. And he'll, he'll, he'll keep you going in the directions you want. He'll remember the temptations he gave Jesus in the desert. You know, he said, look at, look at all the kingdoms of the earth. They're mine to give. You can have them, Jesus, mm -hmm. just for one thing, if you bow down and worship me. Yeah. He does have the power to give kingdoms. He really does mm -hmm. on this earth. He has the power to give people gold and pleasure and yeah. popularity and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, I think some, some people in our own country, United States of America, some people in Canada have sold their soul to the devil for power. Yeah. I mean, they've totally violated their conscience, their Catholic upbringing, and they've for power. Yeah. And you see, I mean, when people hear that and say, well, what do you mean? They, they sat down and said, okay, devil, take me. Maybe some people did that. But like St. Francis is saying, when you willfully turn from the commandments of God, this is what you're doing, whether you fully understand right. it or not. And it, you, you know, you can't call a time out and say, well, I didn't know. Cause you did know, cause you turned away from the commandments of God. Right. And if we knew anything about the word of God, you know, you're stepping back into darkness yeah. and that's real power. You're that's stepping a, under the power of you are, one. you yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking Ralph about the need for a renewed mind and the Paul's apostolic prayer, you know, the, the, the apostles have different kind of apostolic prayers that express their heart mm -hmm. and their, and what God has shown them about life. And this one from Ephesians is so good. He said, uh, I do not cease to give thanks for you, uh, remembering you in my prayers, brethren, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom. Let's pray for that today. A spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know the hope to which you're called, the riches of the glorious inheritance we've received in the saints, and the immeasurably great power in us who believe. So yeah. Paul's praying that we could come into these things that he knew in his heart that he experienced. And then he goes on to just describe where it all came from. You know, that it came from Jesus. He's, that Jesus was raised from the dead and God made him sit at his right hand in heavenly places. He's far above every rule and power and dominion, above every name that's been named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he's put all things under his feet. He's made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of of him who fills all in all. Yeah, that's you know? that's pretty mind blowing. It expands our horizons. It kind of stretches our understanding. It stretches our hearts, and that's exactly what needs to happen, doesn't it, Peter? Yeah, we need to be stretched to open up to reality. Yeah, and you see, you see the beautiful heart of an apostle. He knew, he knew, he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he had other. I'm sure he talks about seventh heaven experiences for him. But what he's saying is that. This is what we really need to receive from the God, from God. Clarity about the hope to which we're called. So many people today, Ralph, live without hope. They're trying to find fulfillment in all kinds of things. They're left empty. Yeah. They don't, they don't know that there's a future and a destiny that's set before us. Yeah. It's very hard to live in freedom and joy in this world without the knowledge of eternal life. That's yeah. There, so many you know? people are despairing, are desperate, are, are looking for meaning, are looking for love, looking for hope, looking for 
meaning and 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 they're they're like at their wits ends and they don't know that the answer is staring them in the face yeah repent yeah. believe yeah. turn back to him or turn to him for the first time you know he's the source of meaning he's the source of life he's the source of love you know jesus amen and, and friends you know this ralph and i talk a lot about the word of god and you know it really is our conviction of the, the reality of the power of this word we also know lots of people don't access it and you hear this prayer like today from St. Paul. That's a prayer for you. And it's promises of God that are given for you if you really do take up the word of God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to give you faith, conviction about these things. It'll change your life. It'll renew your mind like the apostles. This is a great, great weapon that you said earlier in the program. People are not wielding this sword of the spirit, you know, yeah. that that's so critical to have a clear headed, clear head in the situation yeah, we're living in. Yeah, which is the word of God. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people today, and maybe, maybe it's you, maybe I'm talking to you right now, who are straddling the issue, who are tempted by and maybe impl implicated a bit into the confusion of the culture and maybe trying to hold on to Christ at the same time. And I got to tell you what, what the prophet Elijah said to the Jewish people of his time, stop straddling the issue. Get out of the world. Get out of the lies of the devil unconditionally surrender to Jesus Christ, unconditionally commit yourself to believe what he says and to follow what he asks us to do. Peter's written a booklet called Receiving Fire. In order for these disordered desires of our life to be put in order, we need a greater love, a greater fire. The greater love, the greater fire is the power of the Holy Spirit. This booklet can help you access it. This booklet can help you stop straddling the issue this booklet can help you make the decisions you need to make and give you the courage you need to make them. And also this booklet can be a tremendous help in help, helping people that you're concerned about. You could give it to them and it could be an occasion of conversion for them. Go to the 800 number, call it, we'll get it right out to you. Go to our website, renewalministries.net, click on the free booklet booklet uh, button and we'll send it out to you. Jesus said, I've come to cast fire on the earth, would that it were already ablaze. The Bible gives us a striking image of Jesus Christ in glory with eyes flaming fire, revealing a heart of burning love between God the Father and God the Son. It's that fire that Jesus wants to give to each and every one of us, a living flame of love and grace for those who receive it, but it's also a fire of judgment for those who refuse it. In this short booklet, I wanna help you understand and to receive the fire Jesus desires to ignite in your heart. To receive a free copy, visit our website or call the number on the screen.